I knew this was special. Executed on idea. Same thing with our Instagram. Like, just stayed at it. Consistency. Are you still confident that you're going to yeah. hold it down for the industry yeah. and become yeah. that M of BMW? Yeah. I lose sleep over this shit. Bigger I can get the brand, it's going to be that much better. Right. The brand is bigger. Took that suitcase, snuck it into the show, and literally selling shirts really? out of the suitcase in wow. 2019. A lot of people tell me, oh, a lot of money in blacktop. I'm going to buy a blacktop truck. I said, you know what my answer is? A lot of money in blacktop if you're fucking good at it. feel like John Moran. Need a triple double. Yeah. Told him check the stats. Yeah, I got a couple. I don't try to ball. Oh, yeah, right all right, guys, joining me on the podcast today is a true hustler himself. With countless hours working as an asphalt paving foreman to the grind of creating a successful merchandise and marketing brand we all know and love, Raised on Blacktop. No. Please welcome Matt Stanley. What's going on, Matt? How you doing? You didn't sound better. Huh? <laughs> Just fucking bang them out real quick. I don't know what any of these are, but Thank hopefully it sounds good. Me. Of course, brother. Welcome back to the Native Hustler podcast, by the way. I forgot to intro that. Episode four. Here we are, episode four. I had to guilt Shane to get me on here. So. Honestly, you should have been number one. What was I thinking? Yeah, you know? <laughs> What's going on, Matt? Busy? Not much, man. Uh, busy, busy. Yeah, busy time. Um, been doing a lot of raised on blacktop because it's the off season. Yeah, so yeah. as I was just telling you. Yep. A um, lot going on at once. Hard to focus, but um, can't complain. Yeah, right? yeah. I get it. I get it, man. So I want to just hop right into some questions I have for you. Already? My bad. Yeah, of course. I mean, that's why we're here. We all want to know the the shit that goes on behind the scenes, yes. you know? That's why we're here. We got to actually hit the heavy hitter questions. So what was it like growing up in an asphalt family, and how young were you? Oof. When when Bossman Bill threw you on uh, one of those machines and started so teaching you, always, you know, we always joke that. Uh, yeah, I hate when people ask that question. Like, uh, how old were you when you started working? Or right, actually, when you right. do a, you got to fill out like an employment form or yeah. something. Yeah, and it says like, how long have you worked for America Pavement? Like, I don't even know. Yeah, right? yeah. So we always joked that. Soon thirty we were, years. <laughs> yeah, thirty years old. Yeah, we always joked, and it's probably true though. But as as soon as we were like potty trained, and we we didn't have to have our diaper changed. Yeah. Um, that's when we went to work with dad. I like that. Keep it humble. Probably like eight, nine years old. Okay. Started going okay. to work. My first like really full time summer mm -hmm. would probably be like 13. I was 13? Like, working wow. real summers with the guys. What is that? Middle school? Middle school, right? Yeah. Freshman probably year of like high school eighth, or eighth grade going into wow. freshman year was like the first year that was like no more sports. Okay. Because we played sports all growing up. Yeah, so. of course. Yeah. Um, no more I mean, sports, you're yeah. throwing asphalt. Mind <laughs> you, like, we'd have a game at, like, 5 o'clock, and then, you know, Dad would bring us home from the job at 1 o'clock. Really? Home. Yeah. So, wow. Wow. Yeah. Straight to the machines. Well, I asked you that question is because... Yes, sir. Here we are with the next generation. Yeah. I mean, these are, um, I want to say, your 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 brother, uh, Jack, right? Yeah. yeah these we are Jack's two boys on that side. Jack's two boys, and then... Uh, and then it's William, William the fourth. Billy? Then Billy's kids, Billy's right? Boy. Yeah. Yep. So the They're next generation next. right here. Yep. It's crazy. This was you one day. Yeah, no, I wanted to ask you that question because, like, I mean, being on the job site with you guys and, and filming it, you know, there's been days where, you know, the wives will bring over the kids or, mm -hmm. you know, the boys will bring the kids with them, and mm -hmm. they all seem to love it. Even yeah. even yeah. the little girl, they all want to be a part of it, you yeah. know? So, I mean, being in that family and being raised on, on machines and equipment, I mean, it... Yeah, when the, it's cool. When the kids come exactly, to the job, it's cool. it, like, it totally um, lightens... Lightens the vibe yeah, big time. Yeah, for sure. And it really brings me back. And um, I was thinking about it last time when they were on the job, like how lucky we were that, you know, not everybody can just have their kids come to the job and hop on a machine or even mm -hmm. just be around it. Um, so definitely. That's true. Definitely thankful. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I my dad worked with the city for uh, 40 years and I maybe have been on his truck once. Right. You know, right. so like. Exactly. And, and that was a fun time because see, being in that truck as a little kid, you just feel badass sitting right. up that high and right. being in control of other, all that equipment, you yeah. know? So yeah. was there ever a doubt growing up that, you know, obviously coming back to that question and being a part of the family, was there ever a doubt that you want to be something different than an asphalt paving foreman? Was it, was it just in your blood your whole life or did you want to um, be an astronaut like everybody else, yeah, you definitely know? definitely didn't want to be an astronaut. <laughs> um, so growing up, you know, I'm the youngest of four boys. So going to work was cool for me because... Um, I got to hang out with my big brothers, right? And yeah. then, um, I was making like real money, like as a young kid, you know, <laughs> for real. I just tried to sip the bottom of the cap on it. <laughs> that just caught me off guard. But yeah, making money, money as a young kid. Yeah. Whatnot. So that like obviously motivates you. Mm -hmm. My dad always treated us like men. So as a young kid, it was like cool to go to work. But, right, um, right. 
I mean, growing up, I thought I was going to be a baseball player, to be honest. Really? Yeah. MLB? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What position were you? When I was younger, I was like, I don't know, I played every position, but I was yeah. a pitcher. Okay. Um, and then I was a shortstop. So I played, you know, shortstop, second base yep. all through high school. Um, but I remember like middle school doing the guidance counselor things. And she was like, what do you want to do when you get older? Yeah. I was like, I yeah. want to be a baseball player. Wow. And she was like, you sure about that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who the fuck are you? Yeah, look at the family you're in, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's funny. I mean, so is that why you stopped playing baseball? Because you realization hits you that you can't really, I mean, after um, high school, if you don't make it to college, big leagues, you, you kind of like No, well, I started stop. working full time. It, it's seeing baseball. It's different. Yeah. It's like yeah. you, you play on the travel teams in the summer. So that's a big thing. Right. Yeah. I think it's nine, 10, 11, 12 year old travel team. And then you get up to the big fields and, um, yeah, I don't know how work just took over, but, um, that's a good question. Yeah. Yeah. I guess it was cause I was going into high school. Okay. And, um, just had to happen. Yeah, I mean, I wanted right. to make money. Yeah. You know? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Just like everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> not, not at 13. That's everyone true. still wants to bounce a ball, but. Well, nowadays yeah. everyone's playing fucking Fortnite and Call mm -hmm. of Duty. So, and mm -hmm. myself included up until mm -hmm. recently, I just sell my shit. The reason why I asked you is because I played baseball growing up mm -hmm. and I, I mean, it was kind of a dumb reason to stop, but I got pitcher threw it right into my face and it just scarred yeah, it me scarred for life. You. And yeah. I was like, ah, never again. Yeah. You know, I mean, I've done a few interviews, right. And then we just talk about like working, working right, right. as we're kids. But yeah. sports was like a huge part, mm -hmm. like four boys at the house. And no one knows that. Yeah. We you played, know? I mean, we played football, basketball, baseball, um, you name it. And yeah. super competitive, like, um, youngest four boys, yep. the, the boys never let me win, you know? So, um, I had, I was really competitive because of that. Yeah. Yep. Probably more competitive than the kids that were my age. Okay. And uh, with that, I had a bad attitude when I was a kid. Were you? In sports? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was a hothead. Big yeah. <laughs> and, you know, partially because I don't think the other kids were as competitive as me. Okay. But, um, yeah. I mean, basketball, I'd be getting technical fouls. Wow. Like, yeah. It's crazy because, like, I'm not, I don't say that to brag. But yeah. Yeah. When I watch, like, my nephew's games, and they're like eight years old. I was like eight years old, like doing that. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That <laughs> That's funny. You know, probably thought I was gonna be yeah, yeah. madman when yeah. I got older. I was doing the same. I was just like, I remember um, one game I, I played, and I was so uh, myself included. And sorry if you guys hear all that noise. Yeah. I mean, we're at we're at an asphalt shop. This is this it's is authentic. Baby. <laughs> this is authentic as it gets right here. But I remember there was one game I played, and I was so like, I didn't want to lose that game for some reason. It yeah. was the first game of the season. It was like the high school dream while well, I was in middle school, but you, you know, buzzer beater, you got last yeah. shot attempt. And I remember just throwing it from half court and we were down by one point and I remember throwing it and just seeing it absolutely air ball. And I remember just fake tripping yeah. and like breaking an ankle or something like that yeah. because I was so upset. I actually like cried on the floor yeah. and I was like, ah, you know, pretending yeah. I broke an ankle and I was just upset that I, I fucking shot. botched the shot for yeah. the team. Yeah, yeah. I was into it too. Back to the whole playing sports thing when we went to um daytona yeah and we play basketball yeah i thought i was a baller until i played with you guys yeah. and i was like fuck i yeah. suck you yeah. know like you guys are good yeah. so i yeah. mean it's in the blood so i don't you know i don't know if you knew this but my dad was josh's baseball coach i didn't know that no oh, through like really not, not just like like he co coached all of us in like the Dayo league yeah which is like rec league yep um but my dad was like the travel baseball coach for I didn't josh know that. from 9 yeah. to 12 i don't know how he fucking did it too yeah yeah I did mean, he ever he sponsor had, the team Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, he he did? Always, even if he didn't coach, he'd sponsor the team. That's cool. I like um, that. I don't understand how he was able to work all those hours and coach a travel team and still travel. And yeah, like, you know, yeah. they went to the it's state championship. Yeah. They did the regionals. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, yeah. seeing how busy he is nowadays, I can only imagine how he juggled all of that. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, we we're a different, a little bit different That's size true. then, but yeah. um, you know, kudos to our guys because they yeah. would hold it down when he had to leave. But, what year uh, was that? You think? Two thousand ten? No, no, nine no, no, no. earlier. This is like. 2003 really 2004 yeah, yeah i was just born yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's crazy <laughs> um, you know it was cool about my dad was like i was on a travel team growing up where yeah. um you know i had good coaches but they're like really serious and they all were trying to get like the kids to like play college baseball one day but okay my dad was like um he was working a full-time job and like like he'd have practices and they'd be like an hour and a half you know really hour and a half get it done no bullshit and like Straight my to practices it. were like three, four hours, you know, um, bullshit and talking about yeah, the girls from the middle yeah. school. And you like know, just Josh's teams, they were always good. Yeah. Growing up, they always like won, and my wow. teams always sucked. Wow. Yeah. And, um, yo, 
Yeah, no, my dad just brought the same vibe that he runs his business with to okay. like kids. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're burning that. We're burning. What is it? We're burning we're sunlight, burning baby. Yeah, we're, we're burning, burning daylight. daylight. Yeah, I won't tell you what he used to tell the kids because we'll probably get canceled. Uh -oh. But uh, I mean, he's just wouldn't both the first practice. Like he coached a couple of my rec leagues. Yeah. First practice, you know, he'd say like, "I'm not here to fucking babysit you guys. I got a hot wife at home <laughs> with a hot dinner on the table." So. um you know, no bullshit. I like that. Yeah. yeah, I like that. They'd be like, your dad's fucking crazy. I'm like, I promise you, he's cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? That's as authentic as Bill gets right there. Yeah. Back when, I mean, I started with you guys in, I want to say 2019. 19. The video we just filmed on American Pavement's channel, the model Fred, he's also a videographer. Yeah. Well, he filmed something for you guys back in 2016 yeah. when I was... I didn't even touch a camera in 2016. So Wait, he had years said on that, me. I was like, damn, that's yeah, fucking nuts. Yeah, he had years on me. Well, bringing it back before that, I mean, you guys now are huge on social media posting, advertising, marketing as a whole. How big did having access to the new age of social media help establish the business? I mean, obviously the business was already established. Yeah. How, how much did it help American Pavement build as a brand and raise on blacktop build as a brand well enough to the point where social media, like, is it, is it, you think it's, it was necessary to build these companies. Like if, if you guys didn't have access to social media, raised on how would you guys have, yeah. have done it? Yeah. Without social media, raised on blacktop is probably not a brand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I can tell you how we got on social media. Yeah. Um, yep. That's what, it, that's where I was going. Like yeah. what, what made you guys want to yeah. bring everything to social media? So it's funny. Cause like I'm big on the social media now, yeah. right? I do like, 95 percent of everything that you see online yeah it's crazy um but he, josh he posts everything i yeah. just film it he, <laughs> yeah. he's the he's the guy that actually yeah. posts josh <laughs> is actually the one who started our facebook page and our instagram page um but the reason when we started it was if we take it back right i mean josh was flying the drone i remember that <laughs> yeah josh bought the drone yeah yeah yep. i mean you probably knew me before we were on social media right I mean, you um, love the company, maybe? I, 100%. That's right. a question coming up, but okay. 100%. Yeah. Right. Well, I don't want to answer the question. Yeah, yeah, of course. Up, but um, people don't realize, like, locally, we were always a well-known paving business. 100%, yeah. You know? Like, our size was our size, but we were always well-known because my dad kept all the trucks yeah. super clean. Yep. Um, always did nice work. <laughs> and, you know, statewide, people knew who we were. Yeah, yeah. And then, like, even in school, which kind of ties into what I'm doing now, like, Everybody wanted an America Payment sweatshirt, right? Really? All the girlfriends, all my friends, um, all my buddies, they wanted hats, sweatshirts. So wow. that was kind of how that okay. started before I even knew it. Um, but that the, was a form of advertising in itself. Yeah. yeah. Um, and even like going back to baseball, like when we do, um, we'd sponsor like yep. the baseball teams or whatever, yeah, like yeah. we'd take our work hats and like gave all the kids hats and it said like kick ass foot on the That's back. dope. I like yeah. that. Wow. Um, gave the kids special hats and yeah, stuff. But yeah. the reason we got on social media was that um, we had a website at the time. Yep. And um, I'm going to guess I was maybe 15. So Josh was 17. And that was like, we couldn't upload to our website, right? I mean, I still don't know how to like yeah, fix our yeah, website. Yeah, I could yeah. probably figure it out yeah, now. Yep. But like, we were like, how can we post our work and keep people updated okay. on the new projects? Okay. So we started a Facebook business page. Okay. Yep. Um, this was probably what, 2012, 2013, yeah, like a yeah, while ago. Somewhere. Right? Yep. Yeah. Maybe 2010. So that's wow. kind of how that started. But like, we never had any serious traction. And I don't think the goal was to ever like blow Build it up. Because yeah. that wasn't even a thing though. Right. Right. You it know? was more just a share in general. Yeah. Like what, yeah, you, just what keep, you're doing. Keep the community updated yeah, on what Yeah. What Facebook we was meant for back right. then. <laughs> right. Yeah. I don't know what year. Actually. Maybe Josh 20. sent me an Instagram Daddy? post. The first like post the first ever had. post you guys put out. Yeah. But while you do that, it's funny because when I started working with you guys uh, back in 2019, I remember uh, Josh actually showed me footage that he he filmed on a drone that he learned how to fly on his own yep. and would operate it on the back of the paving machine, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. While you guys are paving mm -hmm. and just let it auto autopilot, auto just mm -hmm. fly itself and he mm -hmm. would control it. I remember that because- Did you edit that video? Um, I want to say that it? was like my first like- test like yeah. hey like can you do something with this footage i do know the first video we ever did together was widow browns widow browns yeah welcome yeah. to the jungle yeah <laughs> that was a throwback yeah. still getting uh what do they call that when instagram sends you a thing that says that copyright strikes still getting strikes me too video. yeah belarus russia all that stuff yeah. i mean as long as the united states is, is yeah. still active that's I've all that matters it and somehow i still get 
um, notifications. Yeah. The video's been removed. Like no All shit. the time. Yeah. Um, but I'll never forget that that morning after. Because you came out and shot it. And like, you must have like finished it at like 3, 4 in the morning. Yeah. And you yeah. sent it to me. I woke up to the video. And I remember I watched it in my bed. And then I watched it on the way to work. And my heart was like fucking pounded. I was like, this is it. Really? Yeah. Wow. I, I, knew, I didn't know that. I knew yeah. that that was special. Really? Yeah. That's awesome. I was like, it's a wrap. Yeah, I mean, so so back then, and I and I, I'm still trying to like keep that. I mean, obviously, I get behind now because being a one man band, it's hard. But yeah. in that in like moment in 2019, 2019 was the first year of me filming, right. so I knew I needed to almost break out as, as much as I can to the point where like everyone just wanted a video from me. So my turnaround times were literally four to six hours. Like yeah. I would film it in, in the car ride home, downloading the footage to the laptop, walk in my house, sit down with a, with a drink, uh, some food and literally just bang it out instantly. And like, I was doing that for, I want to say six to eight months, like uh, up until the point where then I was filming like two videos a day. So I right. had to like, right. then the next day was that video. Yeah. And then now it's like, the production value is just yeah. like, don't rush it. Like just, yeah. I mean, I mean still obviously qual quantity over quality, like for yeah. some stuff, but there's obviously some stuff where I take my time on, but I remember that because editing that, I just knew how big it was to land you guys as a client, like almost right. win you guys over. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. Because yeah. I mean, service. back to your service. point. Yeah. I mean, yeah. back to your point. Like I remember the day you hit me up, you remember how you hit me up, how you found I me or where I got your number from. Okay. Because you were working at the barbershop, right? I was, yeah. Yeah, yep. you were doing videos for Dave's Vic. Barbershop. And my barber was right next to Vic. So Who was your barber I, at the time? Dre. Okay, yep. yeah. Still my barber. Yep, yep, yep. It's funny because like, we still like know and talk to all these people. Everybody, right? yeah, everybody. Um, yeah. So I think that you were doing a video. You might have done like two videos for him with his camera. I did. Um. So I was working at Dave's as a receptionist. Yep. I got to give props yeah. to Vic out of... I mean, really anybody because he bought a Sony camera. So like the, the whole thing in the barbershop was to buy this Sony camera where this Canon camera with this 50 millimeter, very shallow depth of field, get this nice portrait because at the time cinematic mode didn't exist. So like iPhone was really bad and just get these dope shots. And I was going to graphic design school. And for some reason, everybody thought that meant I knew how to work a camera yeah. or just new technology in general, which I had no idea about a camera. And I remember uh, where I, w I did have like a little Panasonic shitter at the time for like at home vlogs, um, but I knew nothing about a professional camera. So Vic handed me his camera and was like, hey, I want to shoot a video. And I was like, well, let me take it home. I'll learn it in two days. I'll come in and we'll shoot a video. So Vic and I shot videos for, fuck, I mean, I want to say two years straight, but oh, really? it, I mean, yeah, it's a good two years. But in that moment, we were doing one every week. And we like his idea was let's take it outside of the barbershop. Let's do it, you know, in Times Square. Let's do it under a bridge with with um, the smoke bombs tracks. and yeah, yeah with smoke bombs saw, yeah. really yeah. and ATVs and um, you know all this extra shit just to make us different. So that's mm -hmm. how you found me. Yeah. So I think my boy Ricky. I don't know if you remember Ricky. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah. So Ricky, I think he might have been in the video. I don't know what Ricky had to do with it. Uh, Ricky was at. Um, I don't know if it was before that video. Haircut? No, v Ricky, um, we filmed the video at Ricky's condos. He helped us in to get into his condos. We filmed it with a pool table and all that. I know that. Okay. I don't know if that is the video you're talking I about. Know, yeah, I, never, I, remember I don't think Ricky, he was ever in it, though. And I was like, yo, I want to work with that kid. And then got your n number and did I call you or text you? Um, so maybe I have it mixed up. I thought it was an Instagram DM first. Oh, maybe, yeah. And then, probably, and then I probably. think I just gave you my number yeah. and then we called yeah. real quick. Yeah, Ricky was probably like, hit him up. Yeah, on Instagram. But I remember I was in the mall with my friend Brett and I was walking by, I remember this clear as day. It was so funny. I'm walking by the food court and I look at my phone and I see a DM from, it was either from your personal account or the business account. And I mean, my dad would always talked about how big you guys were because mm -hmm. I mean, back to your point, Everyone knows the yeah. trucks. Everyone knows your guys' reputation. Mm -hmm. I mean, in, in Danbury and in Connecticut, like, this is the company that is known for asphalt, you know? So, and my dad would always talk about it, like, oh, why don't you try to do videos for them? I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, how would I do asphalt videos? You know what I mean? Like, how is that even a thing, That's you know? Which is shit about what I even said it, that. I, I don't know. I think know. that was my first message. I was like, you ever been on a construction yeah, job? Yeah, it was. No, it was. I could probably scroll up and find it. it that's literally what it was. And obviously, I, I'd never been on a construction yeah. job before. I just knew making that first video back to the whole point, but making that first video, I just knew I had to win you guys over, Yeah, you know? And like reputation is huge, obviously yeah. first impression, yeah. you know? Yeah. I mean, that we have a following at that point. Mm, 
It's hard to say. I mean, if it did, did maybe, maybe like, like 10. Thousand. No. No, uh, not even? No. Maybe 1,000 then? Yeah. We probably were just getting started. Yeah, maybe. Wow. It's oh, crazy maybe, to see it at now. Know. Maybe we had like three. We might 4, be able to look back, but I forget. Yeah. You might be able to see how many people viewed the video. Well, that's so crazy about <clears throat> what we're doing here is that I'm just going to be braggadocious here and say that yeah. we were the first to ever take a yeah. professional camera out yep. to a job, yeah. put some real music behind yeah. it, put a drone behind it. Now the entire industry is doing it. So I just got back from a trade show in Charlotte. Yep. And I had, I mean, everybody knew who, who I was, right? Which is cool. But, um, Power I had social like media. <laughs> two or three videographers come up to me and was like, whether they were in the family business that weren't actually, you know, part of a family business, but not working for them. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, off of your videos, like they have a career now. It's crazy. Yeah. 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 I mean, one myself kid, included, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, <laughs> this one kid was like, you know, I, I was doing photo shoots for cars and stuff and, but his uncle owned a paving business and now he's like, my uncle saw what you guys were doing. And it was like, buy anything you want. Let's start shooting yeah, videos. Yeah. And he was Let's be like them. getting paid. Yeah. Yep. Wow. That's yep. awesome. That was like a few people. It's crazy. It's yeah. crazy to think about. It was just like a cool idea for Instagram. And now it's yeah. became like a worldwide movement yeah. almost, you know, yeah. like yeah. raise on black top American pavement. I mean, it's kind of crazy now that like contractors feel like they need to do that, which yeah. I yeah. don't agree with. Like we, we, I have you, I have yeah. a lot of creative yeah. people around us. And I would not be able to do what we're doing if I didn't have my brothers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cause not that I'm like, I'm still on the job 12 hours a day, but yeah. like sometimes I don't want to sound the bad, but my head's in a different place. Of sometimes. course. Yeah. Or I'm able to like schedule you and yep. stand back and be like, we need to get this yeah, shot. We yeah. need to do this. Um, and if I had to, not that I don't run a crew, but if I had to like, if I didn't have them helping, this would not be possible. Yeah, hundred percent. Well, I mean, I can I could even stand behind that point myself because when I'm on job sites, I'm getting pulled by Jack. I'm getting mm -hmm. pulled by Josh. I'm mm -hmm. getting pulled by your dad. Mm -hmm. um, I've gotten pulled by, uh, I mean, Primo? one of the guys before. <laughs> yeah, and they're just like Jimmy. Um, yeah, Jimmy. Yeah, Jimmy. Like, yo, let's uh, like get the shot real quick. Like, and where Josh would be like, hey, come in, mic me up. Let's yeah. you know, let me talk. Where even Jack, I mean, he can speak for himself. He, probably doesn't like being on the camera as much, but yeah. he always comes to me with music ideas yeah. or, yeah. um, yeah, that's, uh, merchandise know. ideas, like yes. graphic ideas. Yes. Like, yo, we got it. Like we, yes. you should do that. You know, yes. like, I mean, we remember the car ride back home from, um, Lee boy, yeah. Lee boy factory. And yeah. that's another topic we talk about, but we mocked up like four different designs mm -hmm. and everybody gave like their own input mm -hmm. and it just makes it so much easier mm -hmm. and so much more fun mm -hmm. to work in that yeah. environment, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot of our best ideas come from them, which is mm -hmm. funny. Not that they're not creative, but it's yeah. like sometimes I get so engulfed to what we're doing, exactly, and they're they're able to kind of see it as an outsider. Outside. Like yeah. they are not yes men at all. Exactly, I love that. Yeah, yeah. You know, I yeah. always send this like the merch. Like they're my first team. I send yeah. to. Yeah, you know? they'll tell you the truth. Yeah, yeah. I mean yeah. that their reputation matters as much as your yeah. does. You know, yeah. I mean they're a no, part of the whole thing too. Or that's cool. Or exactly. What if you did it this way? So yeah, yeah, um, that's true. I mean, same thing with videos. I'll get input from. I mean, even your dad. Remember yeah. the last video we did of um, the trout, uh, the Trout River uh, yep. new truck. He yeah. was like, "What if we put yeah. this clip in?" You know, yeah. before that yeah. shot and uh, music, and you know, everyone's a part of it, which I think yeah. is so which cool. Is funny because half, I I won't say half the times, but yeah. a lot of times I'm like, "Dad, it's fine." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. then we will do what he said, or we will and do obey. what the boys said, and be like, Glad "That's we cool." Did that? Yeah, yeah. 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 No, yeah. for sure. And and it's funny because I hear it from clients myself, like. Um, they'll think it's annoying to mm -hmm. like almost be over my shoulder, like, Hey, mm -hmm. um, or give me ideas. Uh, but to be honest, I mean, just like you said, sometimes you're so engulfed in your own vision that you don't see a different way of doing it. Mm -hmm. Like, I just want to do it my way. I don't care about your way, but I need to hear it from your way because your opinion matters too, mm -hmm. because you're a viewer, you know? And like right. the hundred thousand people that are viewing this video don't have the same vision I do. Everyone has a different vision. Right. So I need to hear it from other people. Yeah. And same, same of, you know, yeah, same, I mean, same point as you. trade show trips yeah. before where you're like editing for Mosh. Yeah. And I'll yeah. be like sitting with you helping. Yeah. And I'm like, I like exactly. That, yeah. You know? I mean, and, and people think, like I said, people think it's annoying, but it yeah. only helps me and only yeah. helps you. And yeah. it's a, it's a big old group working together. Yeah. You've been asked this many of times, but I kind of want to get more in depth with it. What birthed the idea in the creation of Raison Blacktop? Um, the heat press in the bedroom and yeah, all that, you yeah, know? Yeah. So, um, like I said, we always did, you know, merch for our guys and then everybody else would want it. 
Um, and I was using screen printers and no shade to them, but um, you go to them with an idea <laughs> and they're like, ah, I, c- I can't print that. Yeah, yeah, or limited. You'll ask them what you want and then it'll come back and it'll be really what they want to do. Right, or right. Whatever's cheaper for them. Yep. So I was like, I need some freedom. Yeah. I need to yeah. be able to do this myself, at least get something close. I went online and I bought a vinyl cutter. Okay. It's, it's called a Silhouette. Yep, yep. And it's really, it's probably not for t-shirts, but it's something that like, uh, DIY. That's what Mosh uses for his, okay. uh, yeah, for yeah, his yeah, stencils. Yeah, 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 exactly. I'm familiar. Um, so it's something that comes with a program. It's not Photoshop or anything, but you can cut out objects, yeah. you can cut out text, and you load this vinyl in, watch mad YouTube videos, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, you load the vinyl, and then you cut out the text. Um, and then with that, I bought a heat press that I still have, and I was cutting out the American Pavement logo, and heat pressed it on t-shirts, and the real reason I did that was because I wanted to experiment with some things, but I also wanted to take, for example, like this is a Carhartt sweatshirt, like right? That, this yeah. is probably at least a sixty dollars sweatshirt. Yeah. So you're not going to go to yeah, <laughs> yeah. you're not going to go to yeah. screen printer and get a hundred sweatshirts yeah. for your guys right, that are right. sixty bucks a piece. But I was able to go to like Dick Sporting Goods and get. It's funny because I have it on right now. Like I was buying like Nike long sleeves. Okay, that were fifty five dollars a piece. Wow. Yeah, way too expensive. Spent a fortune. <laughs> Crazy. Um, and cut out a logo and put it on a shirt. And then that would just be like for me and my brothers and, you know. The guys working. A couple whatever, of our yeah. guys, yeah. yeah. But it was like small amounts, like 12 yeah. at a time. Okay. You so ever mess up heat pressing? All the time? Yeah. Really? That's all I have right now is basically really? just samples that I messed up on. Because I know how heat presses work. If you like press, oh, yeah. Yeah, that didn't stick at all. <laughs> That's what I was talking yeah, about. It won't so, stick. Yeah, right. Yeah, or I put it on and be crooked. So there yep. it was. And you feet. can't peel it. Nope. <laughs> no. Nope. So that was sixty bucks down the drain. Oh. Um, so that's kind of how I started. Yeah. 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 So how raised on blacktop started? Um, I was already doing the American pavement. You know, cutouts. Put that on a heat press, and then I was messing around with some sayings, some logos, and I re- I still have a couple of them in my house, but. Uh, um, I'm trying to think. You know, you look at like Drake, yeah. he has like OVO, October's very own, and it's like it's like a sub brand of what he's doing. Right, kind right, of. right. Um, and I always like that, right? Yeah. Because I always took inspiration from outside the industry. Because if you look at our industry for in- inspiration, it's all the same shit. Of course, yeah. Um, so I started just block text. I think my first thing I, I had was raised by Blacktop. Okay. Or born, born, born on, Blacktop. on Blacktop. And then. I came at Raised on Blacktop, and I was like, that sounds good. It sounds so catchy. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, I was messing around with this old English text. So I, I printed that out and put it on a shirt. I was like, fuck, that looks good. Yeah, yeah. You know? um, so that's kind of how I started, and then I was selling them. Uh, no, I was just making them for ourselves. Yep, yep. And then it, it was more weekend work gear. That was my whole okay. thing. Because I wanted something that you could wear out. we could wear out. And it didn't technically have American Payment Blaster gotcha. on there. Yep. Because phone number I wear on that the back, sweatshirt, that. Yeah. If I wear that sweatshirt to the grocery store, I'm getting stopped by 10 people. Right. Uh, I need a driveway page. Yeah, or yeah. Uh, <laughs> do you know George? Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes I just want to like still wear something that of represents course. me. Yeah. But I'm not getting stopped Personal. by Personal, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's how that started. And then I was posting them online. And guys off our American Payment following... Um, we're like, how do I get one? So I was started wow. like just selling them online, like not even online, just through Instagram, Instagram DMs. V- Venmo me. Yeah, they yeah. sent me 50 bucks. Wow. And I'd send them a shirt. Um, so You're that's like, oh, how I got shit, started. This could be something. Yeah, yeah. And then um, I think it was 2019. Probably the same I want to say right around the time I came in is, I don't know if it was, I think I came in before. Yeah. Before you even did. Your yeah. first, it might have been the a same real time. Run, a real run of hoodies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which yeah. I did with your boy Dan from Vision yeah, Designs. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think maybe I got like a hundred hoodies, and then I started a Shopify page, and kind of made it somewhat legit. It yeah. still wasn't all the way legit. Yep. Uh, but yeah, that's how I got started. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. And to where it is today, I mean, you guys don't see it, but there's a hundred boxes sitting behind the camera. It's full of shit, you know, and a hundred shipping labels printed out right now, ready to go, you know? So it's, it's crazy to think about that. It just takes one cool idea for, I mean, same with exactly. the video. It takes one video to blow yeah. up. But I think the biggest part of what we did was we executed on an idea. Exactly. so many people yeah. have great ideas. Yep. And don't execute on it. Yeah. yeah. Especially in our business, you know, um, 
we have enough on our plate. Um, right, but, right. And we were always throwing ideas at each other. Yeah. But like, I knew this was special, executed an idea, and then same thing with our Instagram. Like, just stayed at it, consistency. Um, that's what got us here, wow. is wow. executing yeah. consistency. 100%. You talked about wanting to be the M to the BMW, to the AMG, to the Mercedes. Mm-hmm. Is is that what you still see Raise on Blacktop being to these big brands like Malden or Lee Boy or Cat? I don't want to say you are becoming that, but yeah. it's starting to become that with right. the special edition Lee Boy that we could get into mm-hmm. and, you know, the crazy stuff that's going to happen with John Deere coming up, you know, like, are you still confident that you're yeah. going to hold it down for the industry yeah. and become yeah. that M of BMW? Yeah. Yeah. For, sh- for, for sure. For sure. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. But that takes time. Mm-hmm. Right? And, um, no rush. I'm not the most patient person. I lose sleep over this shit, but, yeah. Yeah. um, I kind of got to remind myself that the bigger, I, the bigger I can get the brand that when these like dope collaborations come, going to be that much better right the brand is bigger right you know 100 percent. better budget right you know all that. better all that i mean more crowd yeah. more people to i mean see you're it. getting better so yeah yeah um you know when we do a video like we're going to connex right and we shoot this video you know we're doing this yeah. for john Deere. yeah like, exactly yeah it's going to be fire no right. pressure we, <laughs> no i know we're going to kill of course of course but i work better under this, pressure <laughs> if we did this six years ago yeah it wouldn't be the quality that it is 100 percent. i agree right and it's only going to so, get better by March, you right, know? So right. So I just got to keep that in mind. Um, yeah, I do think that the merch is probably, you know, the biggest part of it right now. Yeah. But I, yeah. I think in the future that I want these, like, manufacturer collaborations to be the biggest part of it. And then the merch is just something that we, I wouldn't say do on the side. But Accessories it's just, that people could buy. A, it's just a portion of reason. Yeah. Like yep. that, right? yeah. So they would buy, let's say, for example, a special edition Lee Boy mm-hmm. and... With that, they're like, oh, and now I need to rep the gear. Yeah, I mean, you could, it's literally just like M, just yeah. like Shelby. Yeah. yeah. Um, like they have all their, special no, I mean, gear. there's a lot of people that, you know, have a Mustang that's not a Shelby, but they still get a Shelby t shirt, Shelby hat. Right, right. Of course. I mean, there's tons of yeah. people that have yeah. the M yeah. hats and yeah. they just get a regular BMW. Of course. Um, and that's cool too. Of course. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's my goal. It's something that obviously hasn't been done and we're kind of creating the space. So it's yeah. obviously yeah. going to take longer. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, I mean, Amazon wasn't birthed overnight anyways, yeah. you know, yeah. I mean, anything wasn't yeah. birthed overnight. It takes years and years and years back to this. It's going to be stepped down to the, uh, it's going to yeah. be passed down to the yeah. next yeah. generation yeah. of these I really kids, want you know? raised on blacktop to be the supreme. I like of that. Construction. I like that. And a little higher end, more yeah. bougie, a yeah. little bit, you know? Yeah. And it, it has to be a little higher end because that's mm. the only way people value it. Exactly. You know, I don't yeah. want it to be like just a regular brand. It's got to be a little higher end because yep. it's all quality what we're doing. You know, you say you want to be the supreme of your industry and I'm sure every brand wants yeah. to be supreme because yeah. they can make this cup and put supreme on right, it right. and sell it for $200 yeah. and yeah. sell out in five seconds. Yeah. But that's, <laughs> that's, that's branding. Yeah, maybe. it's branding. Yeah. I mean, Kith, of course, Supreme yeah. cause is like that figure. Toy brand. Um, yeah. Yep. Toys um, is something I want to get into. One I day. mean, all that. Yeah. Yeah. Toys would be cool. I toys mean, we actually expensive. talked about doing like a die cut, right, yeah. of a machine, yeah. but yep. I didn't realize how expensive those things yeah. are. <laughs> Just it's crazy. The same price as the machine. It's crazy. Yeah. Just for a little mm-hmm. model of it, you know. Uh, that's another thing too with the American payment brand. You know, yeah. you look at Hess trucks, the toy trucks. You're like that. Why not? Can't that be American payment? So that's that's. A funny story because growing up every Christmas, my grandfather would gift all the kids you too? Has not, trucks. Not us. He does okay. that for the grandkids though, yeah. Um would gift I don't know if I still have them. I know my older brother kept all his because yeah. they're gonna be worth something in in who knows. I mean, maybe next month. I don't know. They're yeah. gonna be the value of it eventually is gonna go up on those. I mean, we have them all the way back from two thousand, you right. know. So, so same with you guys. It sounds I mean, like a like unattainable right now but I mean, that a raised on blacktop crazy piece, toy with the trailer and attached and the lee boy on more it. <laughs> value, it would be more valuable to a kid than a hash truck 100 off social media yeah. off of youtube off the hype off the hype so i don't know if you could is it behind this wall it is. i don't want to rip it down yeah, there's tape on it no there's tape <laughs> there's tape People on it but it. you guys um sponsored became the i would it's the main sponsor, right? Of yeah, of NASCAR select. driver number twenty at the time, Spencer, Spencer Boyd. Boyd. I heard Donald it all Charlie. over on ninety five yeah. every day for yeah. the past three months back then. Um, but I mean, how what how did the idea come up uh, with being the main sponsor of Spencer Boyd 
Uh, and how surreal was the moment when you actually saw that red yeah. NASCAR flying by in Daytona? Yeah. Um, it was amazing. Yeah. Like you were there. Yeah, I was there. Um, it, it felt was amazing. Like the coolest family. I mean, it was, it was probably one of my favorite events that I've been to. Yeah. Yeah. So just knowing that, I mean, it's your guys' branding all over that car. I yeah. mean, I can only imagine how it felt for you guys, yeah. you know? Um, I'll tell you how it got started. Yeah. Um, we probably had, I don't know, maybe 20,000 followers at the time. And wow. um, Spencer, maybe less. Um, Crazy. Spencer found us online okay. on Instagram. Um, we were at, we were in Nashville at a World of Asphalt trade show. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget this. We were sitting in the lobby having a coffee. It was like the last day of the show. I think the order of this. Spencer started following us randomly. Okay. But she follows a lot of random people. Not yeah. that I know that, <laughs> yeah. but he had me gassed up before. <laughs> but yeah, he, he started following us. He was like, yeah, I like what you're doing. I like your trucks. Yeah. Yep. Um, I'm in, you know, I, I love the blue collar community. And I was like, sweet, let me send you some raised down blacktop gear. Okay. So I sent him a cool. hoodie and I was like, he's not going to rock this, you know? He reps that shit. Yeah, he yeah. wears it all the time, yeah. yeah. Like I said, we were in Nashville, yep. the World of Asphalt Trade Show, sitting in a hotel lobby, having a coffee, and I got a message from him. He was like, hey, my, I, I don't think the, the sponsor dropped him, but it was like, my sponsor just pulled out for the Daytona wow. race. He's like, you guys can come in at a really, like, you know, it's not going to be too expensive. Yeah. If you guys want to do it, you know, got to let me know quick. <laughs> Obviously, that was like, whoa. You know? Yeah, yeah. Because... I, you know, I, I follow NASCAR a little bit, yep. but I wasn't that in, into it. Yeah. We had to like really take a step back. We're like, wow. Like, think about We have yeah. an opportunity to do yeah. this. So it was the last day and my dad was like, he was down, but it wasn't like an immediate yes. Okay. You know, and he's like, oh, let me talk to your mother. Yeah. About that'd it. be cool. <laughs> yeah. So we got back. Um, and like the first day we got back, I called Spencer. I was like, we'll do it. We're in. Wow. And he's like, uh. You got the okay from, from your mom? Yeah. 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 Okay. From yeah, boss, boss lady. lady. Yeah. He's like, ah, he's like Daytona just got scooped up because we did the race before that. If you don't remember in 2020, we did I do in Vegas, in Vegas. Yep. So he's like the second race of the year is in Vegas. Um, it's got the second highest viewership coming off of Daytona. It'd be a good opportunity. And we were getting ready to go to con expo at the time. Uh, so we were like, this could work. You know, we're kind of going to be there already. Yeah. Yep. Um, so we ended up doing the Daytona race. What I didn't know was that, um, when you get familiar with NASCAR, like a small racing team, like Spencer was at the time, uh, on a short track, which mm -hmm. is like a track like Vegas, yep. you cannot compete. Really? No. Yeah. So like you're, you know, you're guaranteed you're going to run around 20th. Okay. And what I didn't know before that was that, um, if you're running 20th, you're probably not going to get on TV yeah. unless you crash. Yeah. Or, yeah. So I wouldn't say like we didn't get a good outcome from it, but okay. it wasn't what I thought. Yeah. You yeah. know? And then we were going to do a race later in the year, but. You know, we got back to work, and as soon as we get back to work, a lot of this stuff is like we're focused on work yeah. now. Yeah. Um, but we had our eyes on Daytona, which yeah. is the first race every year for 2021. Yeah. It was 2021. Huge. Right? Yeah. Uh, 2021. Yep. Yeah. Um, so we were like, Time flies. pencil us in for that because that's the race we want to do. Yeah. And he said that it was scooped up already, right? For 2020, it was scooped up. Oh, got you. Yeah. Okay. So we kind of like were penciled in for 2021. Mm -hmm. um, we were going to do like three races, but we ended up just doing the D daytona yep. race and uh obviously we made a trip out of it and yeah we we were able to get like drove down there <laughs> i don't know how many people were with us maybe like 15 16 people right because my group. dad's like some family friends it was a came. big group yeah yeah and uh pit passes all that surreal yeah it was yeah, so cool that, first nascar event for me and i was yeah, in the pits spoiled, spoiled. <laughs> it's crazy <Yeah. laughs> um, pick up a incredible. camera for anyone that's out there it yeah. might bring you some crazy yeah, places right? really yeah. <laughs> That was incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But to see that going around the track was yeah. cool, and to see my parents' reaction. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, like anybody that's got money can do it, but um, it, it it just was a good fit with paving, blacktop, right. NASCAR. Right. Yeah. It all worked out. All of so. it. Yeah. And we did pretty good at the race. Yeah, yeah. Finishing thirteenth. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'll link the video down below. We did a little like two minute recap, yeah. and there's a full behind the scenes of the trip, mm -hmm. um, which we drove down to Spencer's shop in North Carolina. Yep. Um, what is it? I forget the town name. Mooresville. Mooresville, where yeah, all, the, all the racers, all right. the racers are at. Yeah. Um, drove down there, visited him, brought custom shoes, which yeah. was pretty cool. Collab with Mosh. Yeah. Um, and which every NASCAR driver is doing now. It's crazy. We yeah, I mean, do that too. Birth that idea yeah. too. So I just saw Spencer and Charlie, and he's like, "Man, I still got those on my mantle." Really? Yeah. And he's like, "Every NASCAR driver." Oh, doing that's that awesome. Now. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. So that's the same thing. Yeah. Like, kind of what we're doing here is like. Different shit that separates you guys right. from the rest. I mean, pe athletes were doing that, right? But, mm -hmm. like, who would do that in NASCAR? Right. But um, my mind is 
always thinking outside the box. Right, right. So shout out to Mosh for even doing that. Yeah, yeah. He came through with that for sure. Yeah. That happened right around the same time that a special edition Race on Blacktop, Lee Boy, was birthed. How did Lee Boy reach out to collaborate on the special edition paver? Did you guys go to them? Did they come to you? And what was your initial thoughts on, I mean, eventually being able to see this brand yeah. on a special edition a special edition paver yeah. that companies are going to be willing to buy? Yeah, uh, I thought I was going to be a millionaire. I thought I was yeah. going to be rich yeah. out there. <laughs> um, they came to us for the paver, but yep. Um, yep. the way it started was 2019, going to National Pavement Expo. Okay. In, that was in Nashville, too. Mm -hmm. And the Raised on Blacktop brand had started. It was pretty small at the okay. time. I mean, it was big in the industry, but right, right. numbers-wise, it was still pretty right, small. Right. 2019, I went down there. We had some, um, some momentum on social media, so I was down there like... Ready to, I was yeah, a savage you, down there, yeah, you know? yeah. I actually like a brought, basketball game again. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had, the expo. I had, I did a little collaboration with X Broom. Shout out to them. Yeah. So I had a, some X Broom America Pavement shirts with Raised on Blacktop on the front. Podcast and link I, below. Sorry to yeah, cut you off. Yeah, the first podcast. <laughs> um, and then I had some Raised on Blacktop sweatshirts. Okay. And I had them in a suitcase, and I took that suitcase, snuck it in the show, and literally. Will let me put it in the X Broom booth, and I was selling shirts really? out of the suitcase. Yeah, wow! In 2019, wow. what yeah. a street story that yeah. is, huh? Yeah. yeah, I went there with the mindset like I'm going to start doing some marketing for yeah. these companies because yep. at the time, manufacturers were barely on any social media yeah. platform, and we had very old school. We, yeah, they yeah, um, and we were starting to get some good momentum on there. So um, I didn't have a paver on my mind, but I was I went to Lee Boy, found out who the marketing people were there, and I was like, you know, I'd like to start. Doing some stuff, yeah. posting your video, posting videos, uh, gave her a card, gave him some t-shirts and I got hooked up with Candace Carpenter. She's no longer with the company, but great uh, lady. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. That was it. Just gave them yeah. merch, yep. told them I want them to look in what we're doing. Wow. And when I got back, I had an email waiting for me and, uh, Candace was like, you know, I asked people around the industry about you guys. I asked your regional rep so every manufacturer has a regional rep for your area wi clark here, here right clark. Yep. um well a, a regional rep is actually from the from the manufacturer gotcha okay so wi clark is just a dealership gotcha okay so jimmy harkins was our regional rep at the time and he had nothing to good nothing but good things to say yeah, about us because yeah. um you know we've been running lee boys for 25 years now that's crazy so we yeah. already had a pretty good relationship with right them. right yeah so that's kind of how i built a relationship with them on social media, I would say, um, because it wasn't just because it was cool what we were doing, but we were a reputable contractor and I already bought a bunch of Lee boys. Um, so later, I think it was in the following year, 2020. Yep. Um, I got a call from Jimmy Harkins, okay. which is like our regional rep. He's got nothing to do with the marketing team. Um, but he was like, basically every year Lee boy would do like a one-off little special edition machine. Okay. Oh, so they were already doing it with other companies? Not other companies. Okay. They do it like for a foundation. Got so it. So they did like a oh. breast cancer pre -win. Interesting. Okay. So they would paint it pink. That's cool. Bring it to a show, get a uh, breast cancer foundation. Press, all that. Don't, yeah, do a yep. press release. Yep. Get, um, get a bunch of donations yep. and then yep. donate money to a foundation. Okay. Which is gotcha. really cool. That's really cool. Um, yeah. And then they did something with Tunnels for Towers. I don't know if you okay. ever heard of yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, for they sure. Did, uh, I yep. think it was like a COVID relief thing. So okay. they like wrapped a paver in American flag. <laughs> so Jimmy called me was like, Obviously, we love what you're doing. Raised on Blacktop, it's really re representing the family business. He's like, we'd like to do a little ode to the family businesses yep, yep. across the country. What better way to do that than a Raised on Blacktop paper? Wow. So I was like, I remember yeah. I got a call. I was driving yeah. the dump truck. I was hauling loads. <laughs> Let me pull over. Hang yeah, on. And I was like, <laughs> wow. Obviously, yes. Yeah, of course. Know, yeah. Uh, but it was only supposed to be one at the time. And... You know, I said, okay. I remember like telling the boys as soon as I got back to the job. Yeah. They like didn't even believe it. And, uh, so we had got on a couple phone calls and, um, they had like a bunch of like their large dealerships on calls, you know, without me just telling them okay. what they're going to do. Like a heads and up. They're like, we should do a few of these, you know? Wow. And then we got on a phone call with them and I was like, had the same mindset. I was like, you know, you look at the Harley Davidson yeah. pickup truck, you look yep. at a Shelby Mustang. That's what this could be. Right. Right. Um, and they were in on it, which wow. is awesome because, you know, like I said, raised on blacktop, we had a lot of traction within the industry, but we weren't huge yet. Right, right. Um, but they took the chance on us. That's awesome. Yeah. So shout out to them for that. Uh, we were supposed to do 30 pavers. And Is there even a limit now? I mean, just no, whoever no, wants one, right? No. 
Yeah, yeah, whoever wants Pretty one. Pretty much, yeah. And we're going to be doing more. More pavers. We're gonna extend the different line. different looks. Yeah, we're probably is that what coming coming soon? On I saw on yeah, the boys Instagram. Yeah, go to Vegas. <laughs> we'll see it in Con Vegas. Expo. Yeah. So now we're up to about 150 pavers sold, and only wow. 75 of them have been delivered. So you're gonna be seeing a lot more of them wow. on the streets. Um, 75? Yeah. I thought there was only like 30. I mean, not to like think low, but yeah. I thought 30 was a lot in my head. Yeah, 75. No, 150 of them sold. And Damn. There's some dealerships. Like Ambrose, like all his eighty five twenties, which is the model. He's yeah. like, he wants them all raised on black. That's top so now. cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that was like a big moment for me for raised on blacktop yep. because that's stamping a legacy. Yeah, you know, like yeah. obviously no one's did that before, and that's cool. But right, those machines aren't like a t shirt that no. could end up no. at the Goodwill one day. It's the price you know? of a Lamborghini. <laughs> yeah, know? not only that, but like I could be driving down the road in twenty years, and who just knows if I'll be it. doing blacktop then? But like. I'll be able to be like, look at that. Wow. Like, that's a raised on black top yeah, favorite. Yeah, like, yeah, that's that's crazy to me. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And eventually, I mean, we'll see it as a excavator and skid Maybe. steer and all and that. Knows? You know, who, who knows? knows? There's yeah. endless possibilities. It's only been two years, mm -hmm. right? Three years. I mean. Yeah, three, two, four two, years maybe. Yeah, I mean, so endless possibilities. Yeah, that's yeah. kind of crazy too. Is that like that was a big moment, and you know, people are always like, you know, you didn't, you probably didn't see this coming, or no. I did though. Oh, you did. That okay, was always okay. my goal. Right, uh, right. I didn't think it would happen so quick. Right, that's um, true. Because your your main goal of whole this whole thing is right being the M of BMW. And, yeah, and yeah, that was my like main goal. But so, I didn't but think it, it just happened. happened so quick. Yeah. Right, yeah. So, how do you balance being an asphalt paving foreman by day, mm -hmm. which is twelve? What, 14, what's the month you guys start? April, March, yeah, as soon as we'll the asphalt plants open. Late March, early. Late April. March and early November. Ish Christmas, Christmas. So being a what six to sometimes like ten two a.m. You know, like <laughs> just crazy. So oh, six you, to six. Yeah, yeah. Like being an asphalt. How do you balance being an asphalt paving foreman by day to creating merchandise and coming up, coming up with ideas and the branding behind Raise on Blacktop to then having time for family, friends, and girlfriend. I mean, how do you how do you balance all of that? Because I mean, myself included, I don't do nearly as much as you guys do, and like. I find it hard for me to find that balance, yeah. you know? So how do you guys do it? I'll tell you the secret. I don't, I can't, <laughs> I have not figured that out yet. You don't have a wife or kids yet. That's your secret. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know how to balance it. You know, um, that's kind of my goal this year is to yeah. get some more structure. Um, kind of in the mindset, like I'm young, I got energy now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no time to complain. Just got to get 100%. it done. Yeah. Um, you ever thought about hiring employees to help or yeah. not really? Yeah. Yeah, definitely got to do that. Yeah. Um, now that I'm with this merchandising company, that yep. should free me up a little bit. Of course. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's an everyday struggle. It's hard to just balance blacktop in a personal life. Right, Hard right. enough to do both. Exactly, um, yeah. Physically, I'm fine. You know, okay. mentally, it just takes a fucking toll. Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. As you know, like... When you get busy, it's hard to stay creative, right? Right, And you get right. in, like, a fog. and You don't want to burn out. Yeah. Because that's yeah. dangerous. I mean, we talk about yeah. that all the yeah. time, burnout. Yep, yeah. Um, yeah, you need to definitely have a team around you. Right. And so do you, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, still trying to figure that out. Yeah. Man. I don't There's no balance. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if balance is a real thing, to yeah. be honest. Yeah. You know? yeah. I mean, I just look at, I mean, Josh and Jack and Billy. I mean, your dad. I mean, they all have kids. Yeah. So, like, seeing, I mean seeing them work six to six or six to nine and then having time to race the kids. And yeah. I mean, obviously shout out to the wives, yeah. <laughs> you know, of yeah. course, well, that's, that's a, team, a huge right? help, you that's know, it takes a team and yeah. they're all in on it together. So right. that's a huge help right. for sure. What's one piece of advice you could give to the up and coming generation who's inspired by what you guys do, what your family is doing, what Raise on Black Hop's doing. What's one piece of advice or, or something you've always wanted to put out there for, for somebody to look up to? My biggest advice would be to start early. Start I'm not early. even only talking about social media, but I think if I wasn't working those summers between 13 and 20 years old, I wouldn't yeah. be where I was today. Right, um, right. Working at a young age, I'm able to gain respect from our employees right. who saw me grow up, saw me start on a broom. Yeah, yeah. Um, if I didn't start early, they probably wouldn't respect me right now, and then I would not be able to where you are now. run a job site. Right. Um, so... I mean, look, I'm not trying to say, I'm not trying to complain, but I missed out on a lot growing up. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, summers when you're 18, 19, 20, and I was working all summer, you know? 
parties had all opportunities that. to be on the lake yeah. all no summer parties. with girls. <laughs> no yeah, parties. I partied about on the weekend. Yeah, Still of course. Do, but, yeah. Um, wasn't going on Thursday on the lake. Right. With 12 girls. Right. <laughs> had the opportunity to. Yeah. Love to. But yeah. um, I was working. Of course. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Without that, I wouldn't be where I was today. Wow. Um, I'll let you talk about this, but we'll be in Con, uh, be in Vegas. Sorry for the Con Expo event. I've never been to Con Expo. I've only been to Charlotte and Nashville, uh, which Nashville and Charlotte. I mean, Charlotte's a little bit smaller than that, than Nashville was, but uh, Nashville was incredible. You know, content yeah. we got there. Yeah, killed um, it with the trade. Booth. Yeah, and, and and these events are my favorite because I mean. I love being on the road and like filming all day. And I know this sounds absurd, but filming all day and then editing that night is like how I started. So doing that again with a team helping me out, it's so fun, you know? So I haven't even told you this. Cause what? <laughs> we're doing a, we're supposed to be doing a three part series out there, right? Yeah. I yeah. really want to do a video a day. Okay. And edit that night. Edit that night. Yeah. And put it yeah. out that night. That night. Yeah. So we got to, realistically, we got to be done filming by. What time does the event go to? Whatever time you want. You can come and go as you please. You okay. Know? Okay. Um, what time does it shut down, though? Like, I'm what's the hours? Like nine four to five? Or five o'clock? Yeah. Nine I was going to say, as long as we stop filming the event yeah. by four. Yeah. That I just us- feel like at these events, right? There's a lot of other brands out there and yeah. companies that yeah. will shoot a video Recapping and then you don't see day? it for two weeks. Crazy. Yeah. If we were to, um, you know, and these could be only five, six minute videos. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but if we were to shoot a video, go back, edit it and put it out that night, daily vlog like, it. what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. How are they doing this? Yeah. And you then know? we could premiere it like, well that night, but like people will be watching it the next day yeah. at the trade show. Right. You don't have, do you have your own booth this year or no? No. Nope. I was going to say, cause you, then you could premiere it at the booth, but that'd be really yeah, crazy. But yeah. Ne- next that, event. <laughs> had the opportunity to do a booth. Yeah. Um, but cause you guys did a booth in Vegas. Nashville. I mean, I, I'm sorry, in Nashville. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Worked out awesome. We yeah. killed it. But the Probably opportunity this year. You two wanted. months worth of sales in two days. Um, but um, it was a lot of work. Yeah. Super stressful. You want to enjoy it. it. And it's not just on me, right? It's everybody around me. Of course. has got to be involved. And we want to go out there and we have some other obligations and yep. we want to be able to kind of move the way we want. Right. So, right. Um, yeah. But the Con Expo starts on March 14th. Yep. I believe. And to the 18th. To the 18th. We'll be there on the 13th. Yep. Through the 19th. Yep. Um. And we're going to be doing a bunch of events. So Lee Boy's coming out with, I think, three new machines. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yep. So um, I should have these dates. Yeah, yeah. What's your main focus, too, by the way, for for Con Expo? I mean, and you could speak on this for other people, too, that go there. But, like, what's what's the main point? Or what are people looking forward to going into Con Expo? And especially you guys as a... Yeah, I think, you know, for the regular person, you should definitely have... I don't... We're not the itinerary kind of people, right? right We're in construction, right. but show up. <laughs> um, know what you want to go see because the yeah. show's so big that yeah. you won't be able to see it all. Um, so those pieces of equipment that you know are coming out or are already out, but yeah. you've never seen them in person, you know, have a plan and know that, you know, you want to be there. Right. You want to get there to see it. Um, but Lee Boy is going to do an unveiling the first day. Uh, so we'll be there for that. Awesome. We'll be shooting that. Sweet. And then Lee Boy is going to do, we're going to do a, a contractor meetup thing where, we're going to be doing giving away some co-branded hats. Okay. I think on Wednesday. We haven't figured out a time yet. Um, so we'll be doing that. So John Deere, um, we're not, I don't, we may do like a little meet up there. Um, but you know when they came out to do that video? Yeah. The grader yep. that they sent us. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be on the Jumbotron. What? Yeah. At the. In I the didn't booth. know that. Yeah. Like replaying the whole time or just like. Every 45 minutes. I think really? Be playing a video How long is the video? Did they say? It's probably only a couple minutes. Couple minutes, yeah. But probably no audio, right? Just visual, because you uh, won't be able I think to hear it. Audio, really? Yeah. I mean, we did interviews. Wow. Um, like a yeah. stadium jumbotron. Yeah. yeah. That's sick. Fucking crazy. I was gonna ask you, where is that video? You know, yeah. like I want to see yeah. it. I want to so see. So they the did an article on us that should be coming out for that yeah. event as well. It's in their in their Dirt Journal magazine. Okay. I think it was the January issue. I don't know if it's out or comes out next month. Um, so we'll the photos were for the article, <laughs> and then yeah. She said that it's going to be on the Jumbotron. Wow. So I can't wait That's to huge. get like, my parents' reaction. Oh. Do they know that yet? Or are you keeping that a secret? I, they know. I don't they think know? they realize how big it's going yeah. to be. I yeah. mean, I don't really know how big it's going to be. I mean, the, be, but. a Jumbotron at that event, I'm sure, is yeah. massive. Yeah. <laughs> you know, with <laughs> everyone looking up to it. Yeah. We're going to have to get a drone shot of yeah. that or something. And then also, uh, we're going to be doing another meetup with Malden. Okay. Because um, we bought one of their new graders that 
they have. And uh, is that why you guys went down there at yeah, the factory there? Yep. So we got to see the machine in person. That's awesome. Got to run it, and we're throwing some ideas off each other. So okay. there might be a little something nice. I like special. that. Special, of course. You're gonna want to see that machine in person. I cool. promise you, it's gonna be sick. Awesome. Yeah. Con Expo, March 14th to the 18th. Yep. Yeah. Anyone going out there, definitely hit us up because yeah. Um, I mean, that's why I want to go because I like to network. And network for sure. Meet Huge. People and, yeah. you know, I was just down in Charlotte and everybody was asking for my dad, my brothers. So we'll all be there. My mom's coming down. Yeah. So yeah. it'd be cool for my mom to see. I mean, she was in Nashville, but um, every time these shows, they're a little spread out. So like your brand's grown in between. And right. Then, um, yeah, it's wild. Yeah. Nashville was a whole, from this event, it'll be a whole year. Whole year. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. From the last event Which that I was probably at. probably doubled in size yeah, since Yeah, then. last event that I was at would be a whole year. Yeah. Which is crazy. Mm-hmm. Crazy. Oh, and about. also, I'm sorry, we're up yeah, for yeah. an Equipment World magazine. Okay. And you're going to be hosting an influencer contractor. panel there, too. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> we got a Damn. lot to talk about. Yeah. yeah. No, Contract of the Year, it's called. Yep. Um, we're already a top 12 finalist, which is, like, awesome. Huge, yeah. Huge, yeah. Um but like I said, we're, we're trying to win that award. So um, there's a few obligations we got to do for that. Um, and there's like a couple round table discussions. Okay. That, um, I don't know if it'll be me and my dad or my dad and my mom, but um, we'll Up on stage? In. No, it's like oh. a private thing. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. And that award doesn't come out till Saturday night. So we had to extend our stay. I don't yeah. know if I told you that. Yeah. So we're leaving the, the morning after. And then also um, we'll be doing, oh, I'll be doing an influencer panel um, with, Myself, Missy Sherber from Minnesota. Yep. Uh, Taylor White from Ken White Construction. Okay. He's got a sick YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah. He's from Canada. And then Jimmy Starbuck, he's from Australia. Okay. And Katie from, I think she's from somewhere in the UK. I forget. Okay. Where. Uh, so wow. Yeah, so gonna, it's really spread out. Yeah. So I didn't like, realize. That's why I didn't want to do a booth. Is because, yeah. You, know, you got to attend all these events. Uh, yeah. All these. Yeah. But I didn't realize that panel was so spread out between. Yeah. yeah. The UK, Australia, United States, Canada. Yeah, right. They got somebody from everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Should be cool. It's yeah. crazy. That's yeah. awesome. Cool. Um, we get to go to a pretty good dinner party with John Deere. I didn't know that. It's like a concert. Dustin Lynch. You ever heard of him? Yeah. Oh, He's shit. Really? Performing. Yeah. I didn't we'll know that. Get you on stage. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> if we do a next one, I want people to comment questions you they have. Because, say, right? Huh? You know what they're going to say, right? Huh? You got to get Bill on here. <laughs> <laughs> The hardest part is getting him there. That's the hardest yeah, part because he's yeah. so busy, you know. Yeah. But once he's down, he's down to talk. Yeah, I don't want the camera in my dad's face I know. all the time. I feel like it's yeah. weighing on him. Sometimes. Yeah, for so, sure. Yeah, too much pressure. Not pressure, but it's like, you know, at, at the end of the day, even our YouTube channel, like, you guys got to post every week. And yeah. Like, obviously, I would love to. Of but course. We're running a fucking business yeah. here. Like, yeah. Um, You know, I'm, we're not, I, I don't think our channel is ever going to be the type of channel. This is him. Here we go, Dad. Come on. <laughs> We're just talking about you. <laughs> you want to sit down? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> a podcast. Look, look at all the cameras. See the mic? You want to answer to anything? What do you need? I don't know. You want to say anything? See us in Vegas? Yeah, sit down right here. Talk about Vegas for two minutes. <laughs> there you go, guys. <laughs> you got the you got the guest himself. I didn't know I was gonna be on camera. I didn't do my face this well, that, <laughs> <laughs> Just make sure you hold it like right 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 here. Right here? Yeah, right there. So, sure. we're no, it was funny because we were just talking about Vegas, right? So, we're going to all be in Vegas, and uh, you're becoming a, a quick celebrity on the channel. So, people want to people wanna meet you. You got to bring your Sharpie for some autographs. I mean, you know, okay. people want to. I'm wanna, not sure about any of that, but okay. <laughs> so, we'll be in Vegas March 14th to the 18th, yeah, right? I've actually taken you on more vacations. I know. I have a lot of my grandkids. And my own family. <laughs> right. My own family. I've traveled halfway around the country with this guy. So <laughs> no, we're looking forward to Vegas. Looks yeah. like it's going to be fun. Yep. And yep. we're going to do some networking, some yep. work, right? Um, but we're also going there to try to enjoy ourselves. We're of course. the whole family. Of course. Um, so we're hoping we're not turning in too much of a project. Yep. But um, <laughs> anytime we can get out in Vegas, and this is why I encourage you to go. Um, years ago, I would... There was only local shows, um, and there wasn't the power of the social media right. to find out what's going on in the world of asphalt. But nowadays, um, when you can get all like-minded people together, I really enjoy spending time with everyone in the industry and yeah. just talking stories, um, learning what they're doing, um, talking techniques. And uh, it's a really great opportunity to learn a lot about your industry. Right, right. Um, historically, 
industries were cut into 20 mile radiuses. Um, we work in Connecticut here, a little bit in New York, and very small radius if you look at the map of the United States. Yeah. And typically, the industry, whether it's paving, concrete, dirt, cheeseburgers you're flipping, <laughs> uh, hot dogs you're making, yeah. there's a certain way things are done in right. your radius. Right. Um, and it's funny because um, years ago, still exists today, but years ago, how bricks were laid was a certain way in one 20 mile radius. You go a 20 mile radius another way, um, they laid them differently. It's true. Um, and it was typically started off probably some farm boys. Right, right. Local farmers. Yeah. Yep. Started putting pipe in the ground this way, yep. and some yep. guys put it in this way. And every time you break the radius, um, there's something different. Town to town, county to county, state mm -hmm. to state. Um, when you can incorporate the entire country, regent, um, into one what building. they're doing in California yeah. is probably completely different from right. what we're doing. Of course. Um, and that's why whenever I get feedback, how come you guys did it this way or how come <laughs> we did it that way? Yo, we're not in Florida. I'm not yeah. in Alaska. I'm not in Texas. Yep. Um, we do things a certain way because of our soil conditions, because of our specs. Um, and down south, out west, they do it completely different. They're still laying a road, but it's completely different. Of course. But whenever I can get out and talk to a guy from California yep. and learn what he's doing, um, we can take one or two things we learn right. and put it into our repertoire, yep. and it makes us that much better. And maybe we could teach them a thing or two that we do. Of course. Yeah. Um, There's always room for improvement. You know? Right. And that's why I really enjoy yeah. going to yeah. the show, and that's why I encourage especially young guys to go out and just learn as much as you can. And I've learned from going to Vegas. I drive, I stop in the landscape booth. You know, I'm not just looking at pavers yeah. and rollers. Take their techniques and, and use it. Um, own. You know, I might see a truck that, um, a lube truck out there yeah. that's something I've never seen before. And again, I may not take the entire um, process and, yep. Turn yep. and add it into ours. Right. But if I just learn one little one thing, little thing. Um, you know, again, we've been loading our tool truck like this. For 30 years, and right. so I see some guy that does it like this, and I'm like, wow, he just made more space. Yeah. That's better. Yep. And we'll pick that up, and we'll add it into ours. That's um, awesome. First, we're looking to go talk to people, right? Yeah, of course. Um, Network. Love doing that. Yeah. Um, you really need to shrink it down, shrink it down, shrink it down, shrink it down. You know, you see things in a magazine. You see things online. When you put the face with the name and the person um, with the with the product, um, that's, that's the biggest part right. for me. Right, right. And I, I always try to get those guys on speed dial, anybody. So I'm always trying to add contacts into my phone, right? Always trying to add. One of my things I do is I try to add a contact add a contact. Week. I like that. Okay. want to add one contact a week and someone that I can go to my speed dial. And this is the guy. If I need a plastic straw, I know who to call for straws. I like that. It's Everyone in contacts a year. have all those contacts. Put yeah. them in your favorites, right? Yeah. So that's one thing I'm looking for. Um, two... Um, would be, Ooh. yeah, well, obviously we got a new purchase going on, um, and to go there and see it at the show is going to be wicked cool. That's awesome. Um, but uh, basically it's the people, the people, yeah, the people. Of course. Seeing the products is cool, but the more hands we shake, the more people we talk to, yeah. um, the better off I'm going to make my life and the better the industry is going to become. Become, yeah. Um, and we're trying to push, 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 um, the industry. Okay. I would go... Back, 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 back. People didn't share, bro. Yeah. No one yeah. shared. Yeah. You know, whatever a guy was doing. Kept it to themselves. They kept it to yeah. themselves. Um, and when we started sharing, you know, and I was given competition that just started my 50 years experience, and I was mixed emotions about it, but I woke up quickly Yeah. to the fact that the better I can do it, the better you can do it, the more money's the more meat is right. going to be on the bone for There's everybody. There's enough pizza to go around. <laughs> right. And nobody can get all the work. Right. You know, right. we got yeah. monsters in yeah, the room. Yeah, of course. Monsters in the room. Yeah. And no one's going to get it all. Um, and what hurts our industry is the lack of knowledge. Yeah. Holding knowledge back. Knowledge is power. Yeah. And believe it or not, the better my competition does, the better I do. That's awesome. I hate the... Which is funny how that works. I hate the <laughs> empower of the competition, yeah, but of course. lawyers and doctors... You know, they practice medicine, they practice law. Yep. Electricians and plumbers. You call an electrician and a plumber, you call five of them in the phone book. You call ten of them on, on the Internet, and every single one of them says um, $125 an hour to show up 
and it's $175 an hour for my guy, and yeah. this job takes four hours, and that's what it is. And basically, they're all the same. Yeah. They're right there. It has something to do with that they require a license, they require an education. Right, right. Um, they have some training, and it's a trade. What we do is a skill, okay? If you call up five paving contractors, more than likely you're going to get five different opinions. Yeah. And five different ways to do this project. Results, yeah, all right. that. And most of the time, unfortunately, the guys are selling what they have. If you talk, talk to an excavating contractor um, for your paving project, he's going to tell you, to, he's going to lean towards the excavating side. If you talk to uh, uh, a seal coat, crack filling contractor, he's going to try to talk you into seal coating and crack filling and saving your lot. Right. If you talk to a paving contractor, he's going to talk you into paving your lot. That hurts our industry yeah. big time, right? Big time because you're getting numbers from a thousand dollars to a hundred thousand dollars. Customer walks away confused, yeah. Um, and a lot of times they end up going with the cheapest thing. Well, this guy said this, this guy said that. There is no industry standard. Mm -hmm. um, if everyone walked out and said, you know, guy calls and said, "Look, we're looking to seal our crack and seal crack fill our parking lot. We want new striping," and I go out there and see that it's shot. I'll tell them, this is way beyond right, that. Right, right. You're wasting right. your money. Yeah. On the other hand, I'll go to a parking lot, and they'll tell me that they want it repaved. And I'll go out there and say, you got another five years in this, bro. Yeah, yeah. You know? Save them money. Um, you can, can, all you have to do is X, Y, and Z, and you could, this parking lot's got another five yeah. years of life on it. Yeah. Not only does it create market confusion with the different, but if we could learn that the better your competition's doing, the better you'll do. And sometimes you have to say no. It's not for me. Call Joe. You need a line striping guy. You don't need a paving guy. Right, right. And if you, if we learned that that was practice, good practices, mm -hmm. um, I think it'd be better yeah. for the entire for all industry. Of us. Yeah. You know, because people are literally confused by the time the fourth guy shows yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. They just um, walk away as a whole. So going to the, <laughs> I, and again, I always, it's a, it's a big picture for yeah. me. So when I go to Vegas, yep. yeah. Um, I learn... From you yep. and him, yeah. me, and we share these like minds. Um, and we find out that we're not enemies. We really have a lot yeah. in common. Yeah. Um, yep. We drive the same truck. We wear yep. the same clothes. Um, we live the same life. Yeah. Um, and you have a lot in common <laughs> with these people. They're not your enemy. Right. And if he's doing well, you're going to do well. Of course. And I don't want to sound like a sap um, because obviously we want to blow the competition away. <laughs> um, but if you go to an area in any business. Yeah. And a guy drives around and says, wow, I'm in the car dealer business. And look around here. There's no car dealers. They need a car dealer. True. But if you want to go to a car, buy a car tomorrow, yep. you're not going to drive to a town or an area where there's no car dealers. Right. You're going to drive to an area, and every town or city has one, right. where there's five, six, seven, yep. eight, ten of them right on the street. Yeah. Right? So the Ford dealer, the Chevy dealer, right. the Mac right. dealer, the yep. Peterbilt dealer. The um, Hyundai dealer is yep. all in a row. Exactly. And it's called group marketing, right? Yeah. They got yeah. it down pat. These people know that when you're looking for a car in Danbury, Connecticut, you drive down Route 7. And six within of them three miles, you, yeah. you can pass by six dealerships. Yeah. Um, I might lose one, but they're bringing 20 people to that it's market. Crazy. Yeah. You know, McDonald's and Burger King are across the street for a reason. Yeah. You know, yeah. some people go to McDonald's, some people go to Burger King, but they figured out that they make more money being side by side than being it's on crazy. the other side of the town. Yeah. Um, and it's the same mindset. Yeah. And I believe a lot of the people that end up at the expo understand that. Yeah. That, yeah. that that's why they're there. Um, besides those couple things, um, the roulette wheel, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, we want, I mean not, uh, we want to. We want to what are you uh, betting, red or black? What's your I thing? I don't care. No? Whatever Manny says, you know. I was telling him about the way I grew up in sports, right? Um, mm -hmm. My coaches were like all about getting a kid to play in college. And no shade to them, but, like, my team's always sucked, you know? And I was telling them that, like, we had practice, and you ran practice like a business. It was like I did. you'd come in with I work did. boots on, and they'd have an hour and a half practice. And their team, they won state championships. Yep. Um, yep. Yeah. Believe it or not, I learned a lot about, coach, uh, about coaching kids from business yeah. and raising children myself. And I learned a lot about business from coaching kids and people because it's all, it's all, everything's people, right? Everything's people. Um, but I coach a lot of youth sports, as you know. I did Little League. We did basketball. Um, never coached football. Um, but back then it was football, baseball, basketball, yeah. right? 
It's funny you mention this. It's fun. I was I was hard ass. Yeah. No, but he was like a yeah, hard but, ass, but a cool. Co- just but no. Work. So at practice, hard ass with a cool coach. Practice, I was a hard ass in the game. I never on the, the game. Played. We were no no on no, and we had fun absolutely. But during the game, um, I never yelled at a kid. Never took an opposing team's side. If if you're my teammate, then. I do all the yelling when nobody's when no one when the lights aren't on. When the lights are on, we're teammates. That's it. Um, that was one rule. Um, but uh, I think I was a pretty good coach because, believe it or not, Shane, I have grown ass men come up to me today. I mean, they're thirty five years old and they're like, "Mr. Stanley, you were the best coach I ever had. You changed my life." I ha- I've literally got just a way that because I figured we were. They were he boys, changed, but we were like men. They were boys, but we weren't raising boys. We were ra- they, we had boys and girls, but we were raising men and women. And I brought that theory into coaching. And it's funny you said that because yesterday, um, your brothers, good, my grandkids were playing, and he said, "I'm watching the game going crazy, Dad." He said, "We got to start coaching these kids." The yeah. coach looked at his wife and his teammates, and he said, "The score is 16 to 18. This is third grade basketball." If that, yeah. Third grade basketball is nothing, nothing about the score. You're developing young kids here. Yeah. I'll just shorten it up. At the end of every season, whatever our record was, 2-12, and 12-2, and two, won the championship, lost it, it didn't matter. I would say to the kids, who's coming back next year? And typically I would get 10 out of 12, 11 out of 12 kids said I'm coming back mm-hmm. um, because um, – I treated them like I wanted to be treated. That's all. That's yeah. all. That's all. But I didn't, um, you know, the star player, he was no better than the worst player. The worst player was as good as the star player. And guess what? When the bases were loaded and the game was on the line, we brought the worst kid on the league up. And, and guess what? Sometimes he got a hit and it literally changed his life. Yeah. It was, and um, uh, it, it was, it was, best part of my life was coaching and I bring a lot into that into business yeah. I mean everything I learned there and everything I learned here I mixed the two yep. and uh, I feel like we've I had success coaching kids I did a ton of travel ball um, and I've seen bad coaches and I've seen bad bosses and you know just learning from both um, it's better to Step back and just be the, the the common sense in the room. Yeah, you know, screaming, yelling at the umpire never did that. You know, that's part of growing up. Getting a bad call, guess what? That's growing up. Yeah, that's okay. Guess what? You were safe, but he called you out. But guess what? You have to sit down today. Mm-hmm. Tomorrow's another day, and it's all a mindset, right? Mm-hmm. You know, and if you want to incorporate it in business, we deal with all kinds of people every 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 walk of life. You deal with tons of people. You deal with tons of people. Um, and some guys want X, Y, and Z. Other guys want PDQ. I've learned that they both got a checkbook. They want to hand me money. I'm going to do whatever they want me to do within reason. Not every customer is going to be the perfect customer. You're going to have to deal. And we deal all the time. And guess what? One job, two jobs, three jobs. I'll make the worst customer into the best customer. Because after the fourth job, he's mine. And he does it my way. I don't have to do it his way anymore. Mm -hmm. Because he just picks up the phone because he's in my contacts. And he says, Bill, we need a parking lot. And I just go do it. Now business is simple, right? Mm -hmm. All that other stuff goes away. All the nonsense goes away. That's my spiel for the day. That's all I got. My arm's killing me here. (laughs) Holding this thing up. That's a wrap. But Vegas, we're going there to enjoy the family, enjoy the food. Um, enjoy the people. That's it. That's it. The equipment's just a sidebar. I can look online at equipment. I can go um, look at a magazine and equipment. I can drive the dealer and go look at equipment. It's cool. I love looking at the equipment. But um, we're going there to meet and greet and and learn from everyone in the industry and not just the monster in the room. I want to talk to the labor on the end of the shovel that works in Texas and see what he's about because I'm going to learn from him too. You Last question. Me? Yes. Where's raised on blacktop in five years? Oh, Matty. I'm just kidding. You gotta answer. Um, that. Where's Rick? Oh, you don't need me to answer that. You can if you want. I got no clue, so I don't know what you're gonna say. I would love to see Raised on Blacktop become a name in the industry. Not only that we can have the kudos of creating it, 
but where people go and we have something in common, which I think is going to push the industry forward. And if you can do anything with this here, is that bring us to the top of our game. Yep. You know, and uh, uh, it's pretty simple, right? It's simple. I was talking to a gentleman the other day who owns a diner, and he said, I got a chance to buy a three family up the street. I thought if I put a hundred grand down, I could put a hundred into it, and I could flip it, make a hundred grand. It's going to take me a year, blah, blah, blah. And I said, Yo, Bob. Just sell more cheeseburgers. You don't have to buy a house. All you have to do is make a better cheeseburger than the guy down the street and sell more of them. You don't have to reinvent the wheel here. And hopefully um, we can do that with Raised on Blacktop. A lot of people tell me, oh, a lot of money in Blacktop. I'm going to buy a Blacktop truck. I said, and you know what my answer is? A lot of money in Blacktop if you're fucking good at it. How's that? A lot of money in selling matchsticks if you're good at it. Uh, a big lighter, a big pen. Name me another pen. Name me a pen. A brand name pen. Huh? Do you have a, you can't name a pen. Name name me a brand name lighter. Can you name me a lighter? No. Nope. You can name Bic pen, Bic lighter. Right? A stupid 99 cents lighter. They're pretty damn good at it. Every way you turn around, there's a Bic lighter, right? So they're the best at it, and they've made millions doing it. So if that guy's not flipping houses on the side. He's just doing his lighter. So hopefully in five years, raised on blacktop, if we can help push that, and to me, um, would be awesome. Be awesome. I'm out. Peace. Mic drop. All right. Great addition to the podcast. Huh? Yeah, we didn't mean to, to see Boss Man Bill come up, but that, that was a good 20 minute little, spiel. It might have to be its own little podcast. That was a half an hour. That probably was it. Yeah. Damn. That was a solid podcast right there. Hour and a half special guest. I feel honored to have you on, and now I'm extra honored to have him on. I mean, I got two, couple two birds and one stone right there. Um, but thank you for coming on. Uh, finally, got to interview you. I mean, I learned a lot of things over three years and shit coming up on four years damn time flies but you know there's a lot of things that i learned and there's a lot of things that i had no idea about so yeah. i didn't know you were a little baseball player you yeah. know? and i had nothing about no, nothing to yeah look at that no right. knowledge about him coaching or anything so um that was a, a treat for my end and um anyone out there that wants to comment uh you know any com uh, questions suggestions thank you guys for watching follow matt on all social medias and um, American Pavement. Uh, what's your Instagram? MTT Stanley, MTT right? Couldn't Stanley. get the original. Yeah. Couldn't get the original Matt. Uh, Raised on Blacktop on Twitter, Instagram, uh, all of them. Facebook, website, raisedonblacktop.com, and American Pavement on all social medias as well. Thank you guys for watching, and uh, I'll see you guys on the next one. Boom. Mic drop. <laughs>